Good morning to everyone. It's good to uh, quote unquote see everyone this morning. Um, let's start off with prayer. Dear Lord God in heaven, we pray that your Holy Spirit will infuse upon us the ability to understand uh, the messages within your words today. In your son's name, amen. Today, I'm, of course, Pierre Hunt, and I am going to be reading from Acts 25 today. That is my assignment. Um, and we'll be keeping in mind our acronym of Sins to Confess, or, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Sins to Confess, or, um, hmm, my memory is, is really going, uh, is really <laughs> bad right now. But let me, um, Promise, promise to claim. That's right. Promises to claim. Thank you very much. And attitudes to adopt and um, uh, characters, um, uh, the commands to obey and examples to follow. So let's begin by, by reading uh, Acts 25. And I'll be reading out of the New King James Version. That is my favorite version that I like to read out of. And I hope you enjoy it too. Now when Festus had come to the province, after three days, he went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief men of the Jews informed him against Paul. And they petitioned him, asking a favor against him that he would summon him to Jerusalem while they lay in ambush along the road to kill him. But Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself was going there shortly. Now I'm stopped there. Isn't it amazing that we have a God who is able to live outside of our time, able to see the future. And he has the ability to impart upon us knowledge that we do not have. He is able to see and thwart uh, plots against his children if, he's, if it's within his will to do so. That is a, an awesome, um, an awesome uh, ability that God has that if we pray through faith and have the Holy Spirit in our heart, he is able to, uh, to do that for us. Continuing on verse 4. But Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself was going there shortly. Therefore, he said, let those who have authority among you go down with me and accuse this man to see if there is any fault in him. And that is also amazing. Not allowing people to, uh, the part of justice is not allowing the accused to be accused alone without having to face those who are accusing them, to look them in the eye, to see whether they're lying, to try to catch them in their own plots. And verse six, and we, when he had remained among them more than 10 days, he went down to Caesarea. And the next day, sitting on the judgment seat, he commanded Paul to be brought. When he had come, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood about and laid many serious complaints against Paul, which they could not prove while he answered for himself and quotes, neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar, have I offended in anything at all. They couldn't prove anything that they were putting on Paul and they were merely making up stories to try to get something to stick. Doesn't that sound familiar today? He's making up stories to try to get something to stick so that they can um, put him down. Again, God thwarting the, the plots against his children. Verse 9, but Festus, wanting to do the Jews a favor, answered Paul and said, are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and there be judged before me concerning
I'm sorry, my Bible moved out the way. <laughs> Concerning these things. So here we are, we have a man. He wanted to do the Jews a favor. And that is always the basis of every human crime. The selfishness of man wanting to promote self beyond what our pre per preview is. Wanting to be more than what we are so that we can um, fill our pride in with something. So Paul said, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. To the Jews, I have done no wrong, as you very well know. For if I am an offender or have committed anything deserving of death, I do not object to dying. But if there is nothing in these things of which these men accuse me, no one can deliver me to them. Paul knew his rights. Paul definitely knew his rights. And yes, uh, verse two to six, an attitude to adopt. God can work through officials to overrule the plots of men. Amen, Pastor Fordham. God definitely uses officials to, uh, to work through the, uh, overrule the plots of men. And we see that even today. Uh, Barbara Robinson said, sins to confess, verse seven, accusing without facts. There you go. I didn't even think about that, but that is also true. Accusing people without facts is sinful and trying to plot against them. Uh, if, you caught your, if you find yourself doing such things in your life, you then should confess your sins before the Lord and change your behavior. Verse 12, then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, you have appealed to Caesar, to Caesar you shall go. After some days, King Agrippa and Bernice came to Caesarea to greet Festus. When they had been there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a certain man left a prisoner by Felix, about whom the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me when I was in Jerusalem, asking for a judgment against him. To them I answered, it is not the custom of the Romans to deliver any man to destruction before the accused meets the accusers face to face and has opportunity to answer for himself concerning the charge against him. Now, amen. No one should be accusing anyone else from afar, from the comfort of their own home, without having to be in the stress of in their presence, accusing them of falsehoods. No one should have the ability to accuse anyone without having themselves to be in their presence, which is a good, uh, a good policy everyone should, should adopt. Therefore, verse 17, when they had come together without any delay, the next day I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought in. When the accuser stood up, they brought no accusation against him of such things as I suppose, but had some questions against him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I was uncertain of such questions, I asked whether he was willing to go to Jerusalem and there be judged concerning these matters. Now, this is the amazing thing about God. When God wants someone to hear the gospel, he puts you in places that you think are trials, puts you in situations that you may think are trials against you. But in actuality, they are setting someone up to hear the gospel. So we should always be able to be in whatever situation God puts us in, to have a word to speak to anyone so that we have no idea what God has, what heart God has worked on uh, before we got to that situation. And it's interesting to see then that these individuals were speaking of Paul and speaking of Jesus. They have never heard of Jesus in the way Paul had been speaking of him before. But here we are, Paul spreading the gospel to the upper echelons of Roman society who would have never been able to hear that unless Paul was in the position that he was in. So the trials that you were going through, open your eyes and look around and ask the Holy Spirit to tell you 
who am I speaking to? Because it could be someone that you need to reach. But when Paul appealed to be reserved for the decision of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I could send him to Caesar. Verse 22, then Agrippa said to Festus, I also would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, you shall hear him. Okay, um, the, um, the Ogeast, uh, verse 9, a sin to confess. We must seek justice rather than doing favors. Oh, there you go. That is a good observation also to make, uh, Pastor Ogeast. If you are seeking justice, if you are asking for favors before you are seeking justice, you are giving in to your selfishness and doing harm to the, the, the philosophy of justice as well as your own soul salvation. So in your own life, you should look uh, in what ways am I adopting this attitude that I should let go. 23, so the next day, when Agrippa and Bernice had come with great pomp and had entered the auditorium with the commanders and the prominent men of the city, at Festus's command, Paul was brought in. And Festus said, King Agrippa and all the men who are here present with us, you see this man about whom the whole assembly of the Jews petitioned me, both at Jerusalem and here, crying out that he was not fit to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing deserving of death and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I decided to send him. I have nothing certain to write to my Lord concerning him. Therefore, I have brought him out before you and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after the examination has taken place, I may have something to write. For it seems to be unreasonable to send a prisoner and not to specify the charges against him. Alice Anderson said at verse 15, that is an attitude that we are to adopt. Now, verse 15, let's go back and read that verse again so that we can put, have some reference. So about whom the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me when I was in Jerusalem asking for a judgment against him. Okay, Pastor Fordham said, verse 23 and verse 24 promises to claim. Back in Acts 9.15, God predicted that Paul would testify before kings, and now he is doing so. God will fulfill that which he predicts. Amen. And, and it's amazing for me to see the correlation be between Paul, this judgment against Paul, as well as Jesus being on uh, trial at uh, many of the factors are the same. They're in Rome. A Roman court have accusations put against them that were not true, trying to throw these uh, individuals through the system with accusations that cannot be proven. And that is a... Uh, <laughs> the only difference is Jesus uh, didn't speak for himself. He was meek. But Paul knew his rights, and, he, and there is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with fighting for yourself, knowing your rights, and uh, using the law and making the law act in a favorable way. Uh, Pat said in verse 16 and 27, attitude to adopt, fair trial before judgment for all. Amen. That's right. Amen. Fair trial is what is needed for anything to go forward. And especially in when we reflect on our present situation in which we are living, it is nothing wrong with knowing your rights. Uh, the internet is out there for you to read about your rights and about what is, is and is not acceptable in court and in law. If you are ignorant of those things, how can you fight for the, those things? So I uh, ask everyone to educate yourselves concerning what your rights are so that you can, like Paul, uh, petition to Caesar when it's necessary, petition to Caesar when it is appropriate. Because if you don't do those things, uh, you are allowing the, the evil one, as well as evil powers, to push you in places that you should not be. If God wants you there, he'll be there. 
but don't allow yourselves to be pushed there through the activities of evil men and women who have your destruction and their promotion at hand. Example to follow, verse 27, uh, Mrs. Anderson said, for it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not to specify the charges against him. Amen. In your own personal life, do not adopt those, uh, that attitude. And a more practical way to look at that is gossip and propaganda, promoting those things which you do not know to others uh, just for a good story. Gossip is one of the worst ways that no one realizes, but you are uh, making those individuals guilty of things that you do not know of, putting charges on individuals that you do not know of, and you have made judgments against them uh, of things that you have no idea about. Gossip is one of the worst ways uh, that an individual can behave and a, a way that Christians should not behave because you are inflicting judgment on people, on situations on which you have no facts. So trying to live your life with making judgments without facts, we can see the results of that today with our illustrious leader of the United States speaking without facts. You can see firsthand the destructive nature of doing such things in your own personal life. Uh, make the uh, commitment not to allow yourself to continue without facts and at the detriment and judgment of those around you, those people who what we are to love, those people who we, we are to respect. Are there any other thoughts that anyone has uh, observed concerning this chapter? If not, uh, that is definitely those two things uh, in my opinion, are attitudes uh, that we should adopt as well as examples to follow. We should follow Paul's example of sticking up for ourselves and standing up for ourselves, knowing our rights, not allowing the evil, uh, the evil government to uh, push us in directions that we should not be in. If we are to be in those places, uh, God would allow us to be in those places. But then, like I said before, open your, ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes so that you, he can show you individuals that you may need to speak to because no one is put in a situation uh, without uh, a cause. No one is put in a situation by God without a cause. So if we are in a situation, rather than cry and moan that we are in those situations, uh, pray to God to open your eyes, not... Uh, so that you are able to see and to give you strength to endure it because he does not put you in any situation he has not allowed uh, and not give you the strength to be able to endure. Okay, and Alice uh, Anderson said, finally, promises to claim, verse 10, to tell the truth. That is also true. You should tell the truth on your end uh, and expect uh, yourself to be truthful, even in all of your judgments. Okay, thank you very much. And I, I hope everyone has been enlightened by this chapter as I have. Let's end in prayer. Dear Lord God in heaven, we come before you thanking you for answering our prayer concerning uh, opening our eyes and giving us enlightenment to what this chapter has had to tell us. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to adopt these things within our lives, uh, adopting the attitude uh, of defending ourselves, adopting us the attitude to be truthful in all things, adopting the attitude as Paul had to stand up uh, for right and righteousness. When we are put in situations, Lord, we pray that you will give us spiritual eyesight to see what we are to do while we are in that situation and also give us the backbone to be able to stand strong while we are in that situation. In all things, we praise you, Lord, and give you honor and glory because you alone are worthy. And we pray these things in your son Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone, and have a great day.